Good morning, everyone, uh, to the fourth day of our sixth annual research symposium um, at the Center for Research in Open Source Software. Uh, and uh, thank you all for making time to attend our program. We have, again, a fantastic program today. But first, um, John McMillan, our interim vice chancellor of research uh, at the office of Re leading the office of research, of, uh, will say a few words. John, please go ahead. Thank, thank you very much, Carlos. And um, good morning. I'm really happy to be here with you for a few minutes to uh, start off the last day of, of this symposium. And it sounds like it's been really fantastic so far. And I'm really happy to hear about that. And um, I really want to thank both Carlos and Stephanie for the invitation and really thank all of you that have um, been integral and played an important role in, in pulling off a, what sounds like a great symposium. So, um, you know, I don't think I need to emphasize to the people that are on this particular call, the importance of open source software. Um, but I do think it's important to just kind of step back and um, recognize that, that it's an important aspect of our campus and it's played a very important and integral role um, in, in a lot of ways um, over the years, going back to the Human Genome Project and the work that's continuing under, under Cross and in many other ways and hopefully expanding in different ways in the future. And you know, it really, I think, follows very well with the ethos of our campus of, of keeping things open and allowing all aspects of, of our society to engage in meaningful ways. So um, I'm really thankful to, to the continued work the, of, of Cross and Carlos to push this concept forward and, and really be engaging with, with, um, with everybody. And you know, I also don't think we can say enough and, and give enough thank you to Sage Wheel for making a very important and generous contribution to UCSC to help really launch Cross. And um, that's really allowed and provided um, Carlos and others the opportunity and the ability to encourage the development of high impact open source software that's not only impacting UCSC, but other institutions and other companies. So. Um, a big thank you to Sage and, and the impact that he's made on a lot of a lot of people's um, careers here at UC Santa Cruz. And you know, to, to kind of follow along that, you know, this program is really predicated on the Ceph open source software project uh, that plays a really strategic role in industry and continues to um, be a driver of innovation in this particular space. And you know, it, it continues in addition to just making a difference in, in a lot of people's lives, it continues to really be. Uh, a fundamental important driver for funding um, research and infrastructure here at UC Santa Cruz, which I think is what we're all here um, talking about over um, the previous three days and a little bit more today. So um, really just to kind of finish, um, really based on the tremendous work of our students um, and in partnership with our um, really fantastic um, member partners um, and companies, Cross has gained an international recognition as an example of amplifying research impact via open source. And I, I think that that's gonna to continue to grow based on the conversations that you've been having over the last four days. So thank you very much for the commitment to um, such an important area of, of research and engineering. And I look forward to you guys having another great day. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for those great words and, and encouragement and um really, really appreciate the support of uh, you and your office. Um, so, uh, all right, um, Stephanie. Sorry, I'm trying to find my end button. Um, uh, hold on one second. Uh, I will, let me just go over some of the logistics and uh, for the rest of the day, thank you for everyone for coming. Um, we're gonna get started in about 10 minutes with the um, lightning talks. We're still trying to um, get a couple of the videos figured out. So, uh, but we can start with what we have now, but I would just wanna go over the logistics. Again, everyone has kind of, see those, of, I see that a number of you have uh, been here all every day or at least a few of the days. So I know this will be not be um, new to you. Uh, first off, the land acknowledgement. Um, the, the land that we are, well, we are gathered on, I'm actually physically in, at UCSC right now, um, is the unceded territory of the Owasso speaking Yupi tribe. And I think it's important um, to acknowledge uh, that we are on, on the unceded territory and uh, note the land acknowledgement that, um, that UCSC has uh, 
um, it's fine, it's important that we, that all UCA event, events um, uh, put forward. Um, for event logistics uh, wise, we have uh, day four's uh, planner, uh, day, day four's agenda is available on the link that you should all have. Um, and uh, it uh, starts with um, today we'll have been, uh, the OSRE, uh, the last three of our, um, uh, I'm sorry, the last three of our students, we had uh, three of them at the beginning of the, um, on the first day, uh, give a great set of talks. And then we also, uh, and these, and then we have these three, I think two of, two of them, I see um, our, our colleague Kat on the line. I think two of them were um, GSOC students and one was one of our, was uh, funded through another one through our OSRE program. Um, so I, um, hopefully she gets a chance to hear that. Um, and then after that, we will have a, uh, the, um, our break into our sessions, uh, one on reproducibility in HPC uh, and the other on data across boundaries. And the, I'll let Car Carlos maybe brief a little bit about the reproducibility one that he's involved in as well. But the data across boundaries is um, Oscar Ellick, who is our newest um, incubator fellow. Uh, and he just got started with us uh, this, this quarter. And so we're really looking forward to, so he's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the, um, the, the aspects of his project and um, that he hasn't really gotten started yet, but, his, uh, but that have uh, um, they, they, they kind of give an idea of what it's going to be like as he's moving forward. And we're really excited about, um, about uh, Oscar getting started with us. And we'll wrap up with a, what I think will be a really interesting discussion on open source at, UC, at UCSC. And as, um, as John had mentioned, you know, it's not just Cross that's doing open source here at UCSD, but we're really trying to get uh, mu much more the other, other uh, parts of BSOE, other parts of different divisions, um, and kind of uh, have a chance to really see what's going on here at, um, at UCSD and that, um, with regards to uh, how to, uh, to increase the impact of research and other creative work at, um, from our campus. Um, so we have a, a folks from um, all over the campus, a couple from BSOE, but also people from the arts department um, and uh, the library, uh, the digital scholarship commons, as well as, well as the, uh, the physics department who will be talking. And we're really excited that Mithya Ruff, our, uh, the um, open source, open source uh, expert extraordinaire, as well as um, a member of our advisory committee will be able to share that. So that's gonna be really, interesting, um, I think really interesting session. So I hope you all can make that. Carlos, did you wanna um, add anything about the workshops? Yeah, so um, um, so we have really, uh, you know, it's the last day and a lot of people um, uh, tend to get tired of us <laughs> in the fourth day. So we put a lot of really exciting stuff on the fourth day. So to, 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 to entice you to, to attend all four days. And so I think we have a fantastic program, um, uh, you know, as, as Stephanie mentioned with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, lightning talks at the beginning, but then the two workshops, one is on a reproducibility in HPC and the other one is the data across boundaries. So the reproducibility in HPC, I'm, I'm involved myself, although I don't actually uh, uh, speak or contribute to anything. Um, Tanu Malik, uh, who is, uh, at, from DePaul University is chairing that uh, session, and she is uh, uh, has a ma made a name of herself of uh, being an expert in reproducibility. She also serves um, as the uh, co-chair for uh, reproducibility and uh, artifact evaluation in um, at SE21 uh, that I and and uh, uh, Ivo Jimenez chair this year, um, and so uh, see. She is. Uh, she put together a fantastic uh, a program um, uh, uh, that involves, uh, you know, the next level of uh, reproducibility challenges, which in particularly uh, involves builds. Um, so reproducible builds is actually much more challenging than reproducible uh, um, containerized uh, 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 workflows. Um, and uh, so that's a pretty exciting and forward-looking uh, talk. Uh, Kate Kihi, she is the uh, PI from uh, Chameleon, 
And um, she's from Argo National Laboratory. She's going to talk a lot about infrastructure for reproducibility. Um, as, and she was actually, her infrastructure, Chameleon Cloud, was the leading infrastructure that was used by authors uh, in this, this year's uh, supercomputing conference, SC21. Um, to actually prepare artifacts for, for review. And then um, Andrew Young, uh, who was involved in last year's supercomputing, uh, but he's also made a name of himself of like using containerization in, in, in the HPC environment uh, and uh, thereby increasing reproducibility of those experiments. He's from Centia National Labor uh, Laboratory. So he's really, 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 this is a really fantastic program. I really look forward to, uh, to see that. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do it any different, but there is a equally exciting program um, competing um, at the same time in track two. Uh, that's uh, data across boundaries. That's done, that's shared by our newest um, incubator fellow, Oscar Ellick. Um, and it will be uh, about you know, visualization and modeling um, uh, of, of really complex things uh, using uh, uh, very new approaches uh, of how to actually do that. Um, and so uh, I, I would love to attend that. I will definitely uh, watch, the, watch the recording of that uh, later. Um, so this is also going to be a really exciting session. And then as, uh, as Stephanie already said, um, the um, the session, the final session of, of these four days is um, open source as UC Santa Cruz. Basically how you know, open source impacts research and how research impacts open source. Um, we we're gonna, uh, Nithya is gonna uh, uh, chair a, uh, a round table of participants uh, that include um, uh, different people from different parts of UC Santa Cruz campus. Um, and we would, uh, the goal of the roundtable is to sort of see people's perspectives uh, uh, and how they um, how they leverage open source, what the open source plays a role in their in their field. And I uh, I'm honored to actually participate in that uh, roundtable. So that's it. Um, I think uh, I look really forward to uh, to to this program. Great. And we're almost almost there. <laughs> first part. <laughs> All right, a quick reminder to everyone who's been on here uh, that we've been trying to use these Q&A uh, documents, some uh, workshops better than others. Uh, we definitely had some great ones for the panel discussions we've had uh, using this one, uh, this setup. Um, but uh, if, uh, if the, all of the links for this are on top of the um, agenda, as well as um, in the, on the individual days, we I put the, the links on top of the agenda so you should easy access to this document. Again, we are using the chat for um, logistics issues, just to say hi to people, to give thumbs up, or not, you can't thumb up on the chat, but you know, like little plus ones and stuff, but totally fine on the chat. But we would like the content questions, if possible, to be um, added to the Q&A document. Um, any logistical questions, like I said, feel free to message us on the chat. Carlos will be in the reproducibility in track one, and I will be at Oscar's um, Data Beyond Boundaries uh, in track two. And during the plenary, actually today it would be me because Carlos White is actually on the panel. So um, feel free to ding me if you have any logistical issues. Um, also, again, if anything happens, oh, we have only a few more hours left. So hopefully <laughs> no one seemed to have too many problems accessing anything. But if you do, please feel free to contact me at, um, uh, or contact us on Cross Info at ucse.edu. Again, so today is the last day, so I'm definitely gonna plug this. We love to hear your feedback. We really use, we really find it useful every year when we get, we do get feedback from our participants about how we did, uh, especially these last two years of doing it online, which has been a completely new idea for us. Um, and uh, the link for this, you'll see this little box at the end of the symposium. I will also add it to the event page. Oh no, I think I already have actually been to the main event page, which is the public site for uh, the symposium that you see on the Cross website. So, and I will, and I sent it out this morning <laughs> to everyone by email and I will probably remind everyone again, uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, so this is really, really useful for us and we really appreciate any feedback that you can give uh, on how we did, what you think we could do different. And also 
to what I really want to see what people's feelings are moving forward um, on with regards to um, whether this stays an online event or a hybrid event. Um, I think that's the that's the feeling I got last year was that we wanted to try to do these like hybrid, but what's the feeling now would be it'd be great to hear from you all. All right. Uh, no, I can't go past uh, the, to remind people that we have some, there's a link on our website or on the symposium page for some nice merch. And I actually forgot my sweatshirt. I have a very, that, that exact sweatshirt um, that's posted there. Um, and um, we have made sure our, our Google Summer of Code, sorry, our, um, all of our OSRE students as well, not just the, the, those with Google Summer of Code, got their t-shirts or, or their t-shirts are in the mail. <laughs> But if anybody else wants one, please feel free to go check out the merch page, merch page on uh, Customized Girl that we've set up. Um, I wanna really, I did this yesterday as well, but I wanna make sure uh, those who are on the call today also know how grateful we are to everyone uh, that's per per participated. Um, we have key our keynote speakers, of course, we've had two great keynote speakers, really well received talks by Stormy and by Deb from yesterday. Um, and those, will, if you missed them, uh, the, the videos should be up next week. Um, and I'll uh, make them first accessible to our uh, registered participants, and then probably later on they'll be accessible uh, on our regular YouTube channel. Um, I, I definitely uh, thank the, um, the different workshop chairs and speakers that we have had. They've been great. The workshop speaker, the chairs came, really came together and uh, came with some. Um, great set of speakers and all their work is really appreciated. I get to, right now I can say thank you to our SRE students, three, uh, two of whom are on the call, as well as their mentors. I think I have at least two of the uh, mentors on, on the call and uh, you'll hear some of the great work that they've done uh, in, in a few minutes. And a special shout out, of course, to our IAB, our in, Industrial Advisory Board members who most of this would not be uh, able to happen without them. And also our advisory committee members like Nithya and Sage and Misa and Doug and, um, and James, um, who are all a great, uh, you know, one of the reasons that I think we've been so successful. All right, and I think that is it. So I will move on. This is to uh, the discussion here. I am going to actually turn it over to Jay Jeet. Um, uh, who, and JJ, I will run the video so you don't have to worry about that. Sorry, we didn't talk about that. Right, okay, okay, thank you. Um, and uh, JJ is two, two, very special, uh, very special case. He's, um, he is now part a PhD student at UC Santa Cruz. He started out in 2018. 19. 19, 2019, thank you, sorry. Uh, 2019 as a GSOC student, uh, uh, for with working with us here at Cross on one of our projects, it was Popper, right? The Popper project. Yep. yep. Yeah. And um, and that and that was that was great. And then the following year, he what worked as an OSRE with so a separate our o, we created the OSRE program, the Open Source Research Experience program, and he was a, he was a student there too, but also started to be a mentor. And this year was. Um, our, uh, one of our mentors for, I think, for a number of our, both of our overall OSRE program. So, um, and um, so we're really excited to have Gigi now physically here in Santa Cruz with us as a PhD student. Um, and Carlos, did you want to add anything to that? I think that, um, yeah, Gigi is very special to us <laughs> and uh, because he is such a success story uh, and, and it has, you know, he comes from, pretty much a, a university that I have never heard of. Um, and um, it was definitely my top selection of the last PhD student batch that was reviewed in uh, 2021. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it was because of our outreach program, right? The open source research experience that, um, that allowed us to, to find students like Jadid and um, uh, and it was also to me uh, a proof on how unbelievably necessary it is to to find uh, a more diverse pool of students uh, via outreach programs like the open source research experience um, 
in addition to the application, you know, just reviewing applications in a traditional form. Um, we all know that university applications is a industry <laughs> and um, uh, people, people will are always, you know, fine tuning, they, they pay money for experts to fine tune their applications. And so what we actually see as reviewers at the university is often the product of that and doesn't necessarily reflect to the true qualities of the student. So it's, um, I really recommend uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, uh, way of finding talent. Um, uh, and um, I think the industry does that already, right? Open source communities are a great source for, um, for, for talent that uh, uh, companies want to hire. So, so thank you, Jaji. Thank you for your great work and uh, please go ahead with, um, with your session. Thank you very much for the kind words, Carlos and Stephanie. Okay, so I would start. So yeah, so basically today I will chair the lightning talks uh, session. So uh, let me introduce myself. So I am Jajit, I am a first year PhD student at UCSC and I was a mentor this year for GSOC and partly for OSRE. So as Stephanie mentioned, so I started my journey as a student uh, back in 2019 uh, under Evo as my mentor. So at that time, I I played the student role and I uh, and I got to learn a lot of new things from Evo, uh, like how to fine tune your code, good coding practices, good software engineering practices, community practices, just just how to uh, thrive in a um, community. Uh, so I picked up all those skills. Uh, Evo helped me a lot during that time. And uh, next, the year later, I was, I guess, two years later, I was able to, I also got the chance to mentor. So at the, it, it was the time when I, I, I played the mentor role and uh, I really understood how, uh, like how Evo helped me. And I also tried to help my, the students who were working under me in that way. So I understood like students who are working on the project has a lot of work to do and uh, a mentor is really needed to complement their work, to correct their work, to review their work. And uh, so when you see a pull request or a code submission from a student's perspective, you don't see a lot of things, but if you see from a mentor's perspective, you see a different, a different set of issues, a different set of things. So uh both, both both of them are really necessary to be able to successful to be able to be successful uh, in a project so yeah I, I really recommend everyone who, who was a student decide to try to get some mentor experience because then you get to see you, you get to have both set of eyes and uh, which is really important uh okay so today we have uh, lightning talks from rahul agarwal he, he's from IIT Kharagpur in India, and he worked on the project Continuous Benchmarking with Skyhook. I really enjoyed working under him and learned a lot from him. We together had a lot of productive meetings and we, we learned a lot of uh, continuous benchmarking, continuous deployment stuff together. And then we have, uh, I guess, Michal Singhai, and he worked, he, he was not directly mentored by me, but we still had few meetings. And yeah, he, he is also a very quick learner and very intelligent guy. So it was really great working with him too. Uh, now, I guess maybe Stephanie, if, if you would play the videos, the pre-recordings. Okay, great. Did you, um, I was gonna go in, uh, did you, you were just giving, uh, I was gonna start with Michelle, does that sound right? Or do we wanna start with Rahul? Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know what, what's there in the agenda. Yeah, it was. I had Michelle start, and Michelle was um, who was mentored by you and yourself as well, right? Uh, me, me and 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 Suren Baina from I guess uh, Berkeley. Uh, by hello, by Hojun Tang also he's here. Sorry. Uh, by Hojun Tang, he's also here. It means he was also one of my mentor. Oh, okay, okay, great. Um, yeah. yeah, right. Sorry, I don't have my mentors list out. So um, yeah, it's great. So um, I will go ahead and start with, um, I'll go ahead and start with, uh, with his, uh, I'll, just, I'll just follow the list. We just found out, I just found out that Yash actually something came up and he was not able to get me the video and actually is not able to make this call. So we were only going to see 
the talks by um, Michelle and uh, Rahul today. So, um, so I'll go ahead and get started with Michelle. And um, yeah, and I just yeah, I want to shout out to um, your mentor uh, Ho, uh, Ho Jun Tang, who's here, and you're also uh, mentored by Surin, and they're both from uh, Lauren. The, they're the, our first mentors that we had actually coming from an, another UC, which was great that we were able to actually do um, not just UCSC mentors, but also uh, the, from Lawrence, the Lawrence Berkeley Lab. So um, thank you to Ho Jun for showing. And I'll go ahead and play the video. And then um, afterwards, if anybody wanted to ask, ask questions or had any extra comments, that would be great. So hold on one second while I get that going. Thank you. This summer, I got a opportunity. Hello, everyone. My name is Michal Singhai. This summer, I got a opportunity to work as a Google Summer of Code student with Cross Organization. I have worked on a project which is Proactive Data Containers Safredos Integration, which is a backend type of project. I am a pre final year undergraduate student at LNMIIT, Jaipur, India, pursuing my Bachelor's of Technology in Electronics and Communication Engineering. My areas of interest lies in open source software development and distributed systems. Coming to PDC. So PDC is basically an object-centric data store for large-scale computing systems. As we are moving toward new paradigms for storage systems and I.O. in this extreme scale era, this project has novel object centering data abstraction and storage mechanism that take advantage of the deep storage hierarchy and enable proactive automated performance tuning with a fundamental new data abstraction called proactive data containers. It is a type of container within a locus of storage that stores scientific data in an object oriented manner. So managing data as objects, it enables us the powerful optimization opportunities for the data movement and transformations. I think many of you may be knowing about Chef. So basically, Chef is an open source software storage platform which implements object storage on a single distributed computer cluster, which provides three interfaces, which is object level, block level, and file level. So in my project, I have basically used Libredos library, which is in C language, which helps us to directly access this Redos cluster and to store data in the pools and thereby in the as the objects. My primary goal of this project was to extend PDC to store its objects in Redos pools. As Chef, the distributed storage system, it provides three level of interfaces. So PDC has pluggable storage mechanisms and the Redos object storage layer within Chef was the ideal target for storing PDC objects. This will allow for transparent data movement in storage hierarchies and scalable management of extensive metadata. Coming to the high level overview of my project. So basically the PDC server is generating two kinds of data. One is the data itself, which actually contains the bytes of data like uh, in array form, the integer type of data. And the second one is the metadata, which is actually a pair of key and values. So they are being stored with the help of the Libredos library, which is written in C language. And then this Libredos library helps us to store in Redos pools where there can be different pools. And in those pools, there can be different objects which we can create. And those objects have four kinds of properties, which are first is the name of the object, which we can define. Then second is the data stream. What is the content of that object? 
the third is the extended attributes what are the attributes attached to it and the fourth the key value pairs where the value can be of any format so basically this all the data is being stored in this redos cluster in this redos cluster there are many pools and in those pools there are this redos objects i have also used sap dashboard which helps us to know the overall status of the cluster in case of any system failure. So talking about the features description for connecting the Redos with the PDC server, I have used the Libredos API in that the main three things were like the Redos create, which actually helps us to create a new cluster handle with the cluster name and then Redos configuration read file which actually helps us to read a configuration file to configure the cluster handle and then for the final connection to the cluster I've used the redos connect command which helps us to connect to the cluster then to write the PDC server data in redos objects I have created a function to meet the right calls for different test cases of PDC like this was of my function PDC server redos write which actually gets some kind of parameters from PDC server which are unique means defining its properties which are like object ID, right size, dimension of it. Dimension can be of three types, one dimension, two dimension, three dimension. Offset means from where to begin or write or read the data from the string and the size of the data. And buffer is the where the data overall data have been stored. This function writes the data and buffer to Redos objects whose names are created as so I have created names as different types means they are defined by object ID, region ID and batch number depending on their parameters the on the global region of PDC it shows the data in Redos objects inside the pool and for reading the data back from the Redos objects and then passing it to the PDC server I have created a function that is PDC server Redos read which actually reads from by comparing the parameters for the different calls which actually compares the object ID and the offset and the size if the parameters matches then the Redos server passes back the data back to the PDC server and to store the metadata of PDC which are different types of key value pairs I have also written functions to meet the calls in PDC server metadata.c there were many regression tests in my PDC project so actually I think there was total of 100 tests some of the common tests were like the region object map test so basically what was happening in the data can be of three types which is of one dimension two dimension or three dimension in this region object map case like I would be discussing about the 1d case uh, what was happening the integer bytes of data is coming in array form so there were two calls one was a write call uh, to write the data in the Redos object and one was the read call to read back the data from the Redos object and pass it to the PDC server and the second type of test was the region object map partial in this case what was happening the write call was there to write the data but at time of reading it was actually partially reading the data depending on the offset parameter and the size what how much data you want to read back from the Redos object this third case was a uh, region object map overlap case in this test basically there was a condition which was the overlapping condition like if there was a redos object which has a unique name defined by its region id batch number and object number and if we want to overwrite the data present in this so depending on the calls and the condition the data would be overwritten to it and then at the time of reading back that redos objects the newly overwritten data would be passed to the PDC server. As you can see, this is one example of the region object map case. So basically what it is happening, PDC is sending the 1 GB type of data which is actually in the integer format coming in the array form. And depending on the user, we can set the maximum size of the Redos objects. So I have set 100 MB as a maximum size for the Redos objects. So the total 1 GB data is actually being breaked into 11 Redos objects and in those Redos, 11 Redos objects, the integer data is being stored depending on the maximum size and the offset. And as I have also discussed the special case which was region object map overlap. So if this case was there, then what would be happening? 
like if there was a call to overlap the data in the radios object so it will actually erase this data and overlap it with the new data which is actually coming from the pdc server and then if you want to read it back then it would pass that newly written radios object data to the pdc server thank you that was all it was really an amazing experience for me to work for cross organization this whole community initiative for exposing me to work on a research project was wonderful i also want to convey my special thanks to my mentors of lvnl and cross members for guidance and if you have any questions you can always ping me up for this project and if you have any questions you can ask thanks Right. Oh. I'll try not to have feedback. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, thanks to everybody. Uh, and um, did you, uh, or, or sorry, Michelle or um, one of your uh, your mentors are is on right now, I believe. Or did they have to go? Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah, I'm here. Great. I mean, if you if there, if we have a little extra time because Yash wasn't able to make it. So if anybody has, um, uh, if you want to add anything else, or Hojun, if you wanted to talk a little bit about how Michelle did that, or anybody has questions, uh, we can do that right now before we move on to Rahul. Yeah, I well, just want to say it's been a pleasure to have the, this experience with uh, Michelle. And uh, in the summer, he has to learn two brand new uh, software systems uh, mostly by his own, and uh, he's uh, learning very fast and was able to achieve the goals we set for him. So we are very happy with this uh, summer's experience, and we hope we can have uh, more collaborations in the future. All right, great. Let me, um, do anyone have any questions for uh, our student or, or for JG or anyone else um, with regards to um, uh, the, this project or the program in general? If not, I will move on to Rahul. And uh, Gigi, actually, why don't you give a, I know you gave a little bit of an introduction already uh, to Rahul, but if you could do that real quick and I will um, get the, um, um, uh, okay. I will get, I'll get the video going, go started. So, so but yeah, give a quick, maybe a quick introduction to what, he, what he's doing. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, Ra Ra Rahul, I worked with Rahul as a part of uh, GSOC, uh, not, not, not GSOC, as a part of IDCEP, as a part of IDCEP uh, fellowship this year. So he worked on like, uh, we really needed a continuous benchmarking framework for our project Skyhook DM from, from a long time. So he worked on that and we, we came up with a very nice uh, framework to like benchmark Skyhook DM at every commit. Uh, automatically and publish the results plot graphs and Rahul did a great job at doing it. Uh, yeah, so let's see uh, his presentation. Rahul, I'm a final year undergraduate student at IIT Kharagpur from India. Uh, this summer, I got a chance to work on the Skyhook DM project through the Iris Have Fellowship program. Uh, my project was to integrate us benchmarking framework in Skyhook DM and automate the testing with the CI-CD pipelines. Before I start discussing about my project, let me briefly explain what is Skyhook DM. Skyhook is built using the SAP distributed storage file system which leverages a programmable storage approach to provide data management functionality directly within the storage layer. It utilizes SAP's existing object class mechanism by developing customized C++ object classes and methods that enable database operations such as select, project, aggregate to be pushed down to the object storage layer. Skyhook basically partitions the data and stores these partitions and object which thereby apply the implemented methods locally on the data. Now coming to my project, 
Skyhook DM is a performance critical storage system and small changes in the source code often resulted in significant performance changes. So it was very important to keep track of all these changes so that the project can be saved from silent uh, degradation and can be made more robust. To overcome the problems, a benchmarking framework can be used to create benchmarks for all the performance critical parts of the source code. So benchmark are simple tests that execute some operation, operations which help to access the relative performance of an object. Once all the benchmark tests are written, a CI-CD pipeline can further be utilized to execute all these tests and as an add-on, some visuals like comparison plot uh, can be made using the results. So in the first phase, I started exploring a few of the open source benchmarking frameworks and uh, finally ended up using the Conbench. Conbench is developed by Ursa Lab and it was used by the Apache Aero project uh, that made it a, a great fit as per the requirements of our project. I wrote all the benchmarks that were needed to test the performance critical parts of Skyhook. Now as we are good to go with the benchmarking framework, I started working on the automation part. With the help of GitHub Actions, I made few workflows that executes all the benchmarks. Whenever a PR is raised and stored, stores the results in a different repository. The stored outputs are further being utilized by the Python scripts to generate some comparison plots that are quite easy to interpret. Uh, so you can see uh, some of the uh, visuals in this slide. Now as an enhancement, I further added a command bot that posts the output in the same PR thread uh, making it much easier for the maintainers to get the result at same place and it was also very helpful for the new contributors uh, who are raising pull requests for the first time in this Skyhook DM repo. Uh, so let me briefly summarize the whole workflow. At first a github action build is triggered whenever a contributor raises a PR in the main Skyhook DM repo. The main job of the workflow is to build the latest Skyhook DM uh, docker image. Uh, consisting of all the changes made by the contributor as soon as the job is finished it triggers another build in the benchmarks repo using the uh, webhooks where here all the benchmark tests are executed with the help of conbench and all the json outputs that are generated uh, are stored in a well structured format once all the results are available the python scripts are executed which further generates the plot this plots are further being utilized by the command bot that I just showed. Uh, that was a quick overview of my project. I hope that I explained it well. I will be very happy to answer all the questions of any. Uh, you can also reach me at my mail address mentioned in this slide. So thank you everyone. Bye bye. Thanks so much for that one. Um, did anyone have questions for Robert? Hi, this is Jason. I have a question. I put it in the chat, but <clears throat> I can throw it out there. I didn't quite understand the purpose of these auto-generated plots. The auto-generated plots seem to be information on, I think, lines of code that were changed, if I understood. How, how is that used in the context of the testing? Uh, OK, thank you for the question. Uh, so basically, uh, we have the benchmark tests and they provide some outputs uh, like uh, uh, what is the CPU percentage usage and uh, uh, how is the performance of the uh, instance. So based on that uh, data, uh, I make uh, the plots. Like they are not uh, just the uh, lines of changes. They have some statistical data also. Excellent. So they're uh, yeah. performance yeah. plots too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If I if I may add to that what Rahul just said, uh, the plots are basically so for Skyhook we have a basic set of benchmarks where we do like column selectivity experiments and row selectivity experiments. So we try to see what's the quality latency on selecting certain percentage of columns and rows, 
So for now, we have those two experiments and the plots are of those row selectivity and column selectivity experiments to see how Skyhook makes the performance better uh, on doing offloading with row selectivity and column selectivity. And yeah, so basically that. And these tests are not necessarily done within the context of Arrow or or Spark. They're uh, so they, these tests more generic are, framework. Uh, no, so they do not use any other framework. So since Skyhook is heavily integrated with the Arrow dataset API, so these are basically Arrow dataset API benchmarks. And the benchmarks we have we have also not written the benchmarks completely. We just reuse the Conbench benchmarking framework that Arrow community created. And we just just tweak it a little so that it can use Skyhook, and we try to reproduce the performance with and without Skyhook. Okay, great. Um, any other questions or any comments from Arul or JG? No, it no. was a, okay sorry uh, it was a great experience working with Jajit uh, like I got to learn many new things I was completely new to Skyhook DM so I was very happy working with him and uh, of course uh, it was a great experience for me uh, as a Iris have fellowship program thank you yeah. thanks Rahul. Yeah, Rahul is a great great student yeah great um, like I said, I'm, uh, unfortunately, we were not able to have um, the video from Yash in the end, um, and he was not able to join the call. Uh, uh, some th things came up in uh, as they do. Um, I was hoping, Gigi, if you may want to just talk a little bit about what he did, and then we will. He is going to send the video so that we can post it separately uh, if anybody's interested. Are you on? Hi, uh, sorry. Do, uh, yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> do you, yeah, do, would you, you talk a little bit about, you were, you mentored Yash, correct? I'm not getting my, my mentor. Yeah, I, I, I mentored Yash, yeah, as a partner. <laughs> um, great, so if you wanna just, if you just give a little overview of what he, what his project was, and then um, we'll hopefully be able to post the video uh, in the next few days uh, for people to see. Okay, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, so, uh, Yash worked on a very crucial part of the project, which is like creating documentation. Uh, we, for us to open a successful, uh, a good pull request to the Arrow community, we had the code, but we didn't have a lot of guides and documentation, uh, doc strings, etc., to complement it and so that people can understand and review it properly. So, Yes, did all the work of adding doc strings, adding documentation, uh, some Im improvements to previous guides, and yeah, and he did a great job at it. Uh, uh, his 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 contribution of the, of the documentation is is the is a part of our pull request, and uh, so yeah, hopefully, which will get merged, and we will also have Yash as a contributor to the in inside the Arrow project uh, in the Skyhook part. So, yeah, and he, he he was a great student too. Great. Well, that that was definitely uh, it, I I think it's uh, pretty impressive. Actually, all of the students we had this year uh, were quite impressive. So I wanted to thank everyone uh, who was involved with the OSRE project. And a reminder: um, a number of our students, like Yash and I believe yeah, and Yash and Michal, were sponsored. Uh, their participation in, in the program was sponsored through GSOC. We had, and then um, another uh, couple others were sponsored through um, Iris Tech, that um, which was uh, I'm blanking on Rahul. Yeah, Rahul's um, project was sponsored through, and also we had um, uh, folks uh, uh, sponsored by the Cloud Native Foundation under the Linux Foundation. So that was um, we definitely had enjoyed our. Um, working with our sponsors and um, working with our students this year. I, I, I will plug one more time, and maybe Carlos wants to add to this as well, that we will be doing this again next year. 
Um, we will hopefully be able to uh, be a GSAC or, or a mentor organization again, but we will definitely have um, the, our, the OSRE project um, going. And uh, if your organization is all interested in potentially sponsoring a, um, um, a student or working with any of the projects that we will have on our mentor, or sorry, on our project ideas page, uh, feel free to reach out. We will be uh, starting outreach to sponsors um, next month at, at the latest, probably uh, maybe even get started for the end of this month, at least getting the system set up for that. Um, and then again, and then following up with students and mentors um, all around the same time. So this is something we're gonna get started early, a bit earlier this year and um, you should be hearing, people should be hearing from us very soon about it. Carlos, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I uh, thank you, Stephanie. And I think uh, uh, and I want to very much thank our our students who have participated in the open source research experience and all the mentors uh, that participated there um, and, and, and made sure that the students had a great experience. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and I think, yeah, we have uh, big plans for the open source research experience. Um, we had very consistent feedback from it, our members of industry at CROSS that we need to start this much earlier than we did in the past. Um, and the last two years, we, we typically start in February and in March. Um, and uh, by that time, you know, industry members have, uh, or the industry, the companies uh, industry have already decided what to spend on, uh, on the following summer. Um, so we needed to actually pull this forward um, uh, a little bit. Um, and so we're starting this November. Um, we were putting together the project ideas uh, for uh, summer 22. Um, and then uh, uh, we'll basically have the project ideas posted uh, by, by late December, um, maybe mid-December even. Uh, so people uh, have time to look at this during the holiday break. Um, and then uh, in January, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to receive um, uh, hopefully lots of offers from, uh, from companies who want to support some of these projects. Um, and then we align essentially the deadlines with the various um, funding, uh, sorry, the, the various outreach programs that we are uh, that we're using to publicize um, those project ideas. Um, Google Summer of Code is certainly one of the top ones, uh, but then also, and we mentioned that multiple times, IRISEP, uh, it's the Institute, NSF supported Institute for Research and Innovation uh, and Software um, uh, for high energy physicists, um, which is an institute that basically puts together the new uh, software infrastructure for the next generation of the LHC, which is called High Luminosity uh, LHC HL, um, and, uh, and 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 where it's basically an order of magnitude more data, right? So they had to like redo their entire data um, uh, uh, stack um, and analysis pipeline, and so we're very excited to be involved in that. And they have a number of fellowships uh, to to support summer students and. And then we have, you know, in the past, we had the Linux Foundation um, uh, also supporting us, um, in particular the um, cloud computing, um, cloud native um, uh, computing uh, uh, foundation, um, uh, which is part of the Linux Foundation, um, have supported uh, has supported a project, a summer project. Um, and then we have also uh, other uh, sources of funding uh, inside of UC Santa Cruz, right? So the um, Fellowship for uh, Anti-Racist um, Research um, supported one student. So the open source research experience is really a program that matches uh, mentors with project ideas, with new students from anywhere in the world, uh, with uh, funding sources, whether it's from uh, government supported institutes from private uh, foundations or from um, uh, for company from companies um, uh, to uh, to actually get work done right and so we use that for for jump starting our uh, incubator communities um, 
open source communities and and I think it's been working really great but uh, we're, we're learning every year is going to be better and we are also going to um, uh, we, we have found that more the more mentors we have um, the more uh, funding we attract uh, the more students participate so this is only getting better uh, as it grows and uh, it's very much inspired by the kind of scalability tricks that the Google Summer of Code is using. Um, so we are uh, pretty confident we can scale this uh, a lot. Um, and we hope to actually include mentors from not only the UC Santa Cruz campus, but also other campuses and other UC uh, areas like the we already do from, from Lawrenceburg to National Labs. So it's, um, so I think it's, uh, um, uh, and, and Stephanie says, I should stop talking. <laughs> so I will. Uh, well, <laughs> um, I was trying but, to be subtle. But, but thank you. <laughs> um, and so, um, but yeah, thank you so much for participating in this program. And we look forward to, to participate with you again. All right, great. Thank you. And um, yeah, sorry, I, um, uh, I just wrap, we're wrapping up because we have to move on to our next uh, session. So we'll start in just a couple of minutes and give everyone a couple of minutes to get their glass of water. A quick break. Um, so we'll see you in the workshop starting at uh, in two minutes. <laughs> okay, we'll see you soon. <laughs>